The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. What a great privilege it would be to be a pastor for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Under the bona fide spiritual gift of a pastor teacher for a male believer. And in order to be mindful for the doctrine that he has to feed to the church. Because angels also will learn from the church. In Acts chapter 15 verses 36. We have a great verse for us to know. To look. And to say. Let us return now and visit the brethren in every city where we have announced the word of the Lord and how, and see how they are getting on. The pastor has his work as well as the evangelist and we are desirous to furnish a motto for him. Such a motto we have in the words, let us return. We are not to regard this expression only as a narrative of what was done, but as a model of what ought to be done. If the evangelist is responsible to preach the gospel in the regions beyond, so long as there are regions to be evangelized, the pastor is responsible to go again and visit his brethren, so long as there are brethren to be visited. The evangelist forms the interesting connection. The pastor maintains and strengthens that connection. The one is the instrument of creating the beautiful link, the other for, for, for perpetuating it. It is quite possible that the two gifts may exist in the same person as in Paul's case, but whether this be so or not, each gift has its own specific sphere and object. The business of the evangelist is to call out the brethren. The business of the pastor teacher is to look after them, to feed them, to take care, to take care of them. The evangelist goes first and preaches the word of the Lord. The pastor teacher goes again and visits those upon whom that word has taken effect. The farmer calls out the sheep, the later feeds and takes care of them. The order of these things is divinely beautiful. The Lord would not gather out his sheep and leave them to wander uncared, for or unfed. This would be wholly unlike his gracious, tender, thoughtful way. Hence, he not only imparts the gift whereby his sheep are to be called into existence, but also that whereby they are to be fed and maintained. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill, O oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Understand these truths as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head, board, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and their eternal life. In our way, telling to Lord God the Father to believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have the eternal truth. This eternal truth, for so very simple, believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great man is to, grow, is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, and for the pastor teacher, the great man is to carry so long and herald the words out of season because of the diamond of which has been called, and not to worry about the softies. We shall continue tomorrow because the wind is too strong. Father, good for the privilege of us going to fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the whole field and other things, and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.